On this special dialogue, we are here to talk about things that are relevant to you, things that are relevant to the auto industry, and things that definitely come up when we are assessing the whole year in the auto space. One of the most hottest topics is, of course, electric vehicles. We've been talking about that for quite some time. Now we are seeing a lot of action too. It's not just about the talk. And joining me are two gentlemen who are very well aware of those trends, are also very much involved in that change, and are also bringing us a lot of exciting products. Santosh Ayer and Vivek Shivats, it's wonderful to see you both. Thank you. Thanks for wonderful that. to see you like this. Yeah. You know, uh, thanks to you. <laughs> trying to do something yeah. different. But thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you heard what I had to say, and it's sort of maybe a very cliched uh, way to begin. But, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, India, there's so much always said about, oh, India's not ready. You know, it'll take, it'll take a while for us to get there. And yet, the last year has shown that not only is our consumer ready, but, uh, you know, the adoption has begun at a pace that has surprised many. Uh, your brand is the sort of living proof of that. Uh, gratifying the last year? Definitely. Uh, both gratifying as well. And it's not a fluke. You put in a lot of hard work. I know that. A lot of hard work. <laughs> if you ask me, I'll say the results we got are not equal to the hard work, but probably it will come yeah. sometime later. But yes, very satisfying. I know a lot of people who would look at your sales number and be like, seriously, like how much more do you want? <laughs> No, we want more and uh, the customers are keep clearly giving us an indication that they'll bite into the EMI pie very soon. Yeah. Santosh, with Mercedes, we've seen not just new model introductions, not just the fact that, uh, you know, you've had more than one, but you sort of kept pace with what's happening with the brand globally. You know, you've not been like, oh, for India, we'll do it like this. Um, the EQE SUV is a great example of that, uh, which is now uh, even, even shortlisted at the World Car Awards. The, uh, it shows a certain intent, but intent is one thing. What What is the customer telling you? I think it's a very good question. You know, we have been now since 2020, we first launched the EQC, then we localized the EQS, and we, we said that we will come top down in the pyramid. And uh, I think the last year, our penetration has gone up by 4%. So you can say 4% of our sales are EVs, uh, which is great compared to mass market around 2, 1.5%. Uh, but on the other side, there is still an assistance uh, in terms of adoption, you yeah. know, there is a set of consumers who care for sustainability, who also feel that their kids should be dropped in school in an EV or I should go in the office in the EV. And uh, then there is the other set who are still apprehensive. They keep saying my next car would be an EV. Uh, at this stage, uh, it's a question mark. So uh, I think uh, not only in India, but worldwide also we are seeing customer adoption is not at an accelerated pace that what we thought uh, would happen. And uh, therefore, we said that let, uh, on one hand, let the customer decide the pace of adoption. But we should offer more options. So even this year, we are going to introduce three new EVs to the market. So we continue with the product offensive. We focus a lot on charging network because that's another end of the spectrum. And the third biggest one is consumer education. You know, the drivers of uh, EVs. Uh, you know, my own case, when I, I, when I started driving, my driver was running almost uh, once in three days to charge. And I said, that is 60% charge. But it's just the panic. Anxiety. Panic. <laughs> you know, they, they're used to this mobile phone plugging in at uh, the moment it reaches. 100% all yeah. right. Yeah. And that's something you don't do in a combustion engine, right? You still, uh, actually, you can go right uh, and take the full juice out. Yeah. So these are things, I think it takes time, but it's all happening. Uh, that's the good part. And uh, India is no exception. Three new models, you want to tell me which ones? <laughs> uh, I mean, straight away, I got that. No, okay, I won't put you on the spot. Uh, you know, so are you saying that the interest is there, but the conversion is still some... To be honest, uh, you know, out of the cars, that, the EVs that we sell, the 20 to 30 percent of customers are pure EV customers. They come in with the product, they have done their online. They, they know they want to buy an EV. Yeah, and they want to buy an EV. They are very really educated, they are passionate. They must have driven an uh, EV in the US or in some other markets. The balance are basically commercial engine customers who come and then our sales guys pitch and explain and then they start getting converted. And it's not easy, it's a long lead time because you have to send the car uh, first for extended period. The, we have to do a charging, uh, I would say, survey where can we install a yeah. one box in your office or residence. So it's not an easy sale compared to commercial engine. So many of our sales guys also feel, okay, uh, is it worth? And then we need to explain to them, yeah, because, you know, for the long-term future, uh, we need to do that. So it's uh, but once people shift to an EV, I hardly see them going back because then the benefits uh, and then they are into it. 
Absolutely. Vivek, there's two things that are said very often about premium EVs. That one, you know, at that price point, it's very easy to offer the kitchen sink and everything. You know, it's like very high tech. So you can go like totally to the best of the best in terms of what you offer. And the second is very often said that, which may not necessarily be true and you, you can correct me, but which is said that very often buyers of premium EVs, it's not their only car in their family. Those are not really the kind of things that you have the luxury to deal with. Uh, so how do you convince your potential buyer? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, contrary to what uh, Santosh just said, many of our buyers are pre-decided when they come to the store. You know, they just want a validation. Now more so, as you split it into a different yeah, network yeah, retail chain. Yes. But uh, the expectation of the EV is still that it will offer a slightly higher level of performance, higher level of feature pack compared to a, uh, you know, equivalent eyes, you know. And both of us have the same problem. We have the same models, both in EV and eyes. So there is a... There it, it has to be more it, impressive. It has to be yeah. more impressive. And the other uh, vector that people see, it, see us is, they compare the price points. You know, I'm going to get an EV, a smaller car at a higher price. How do I trade off with a nice car and this? Probably they may as well segment. buy something. May as well yeah. buy a yeah. upper segment. Yeah. So it is a tough choice. Uh, primarily the reason to buy is cost of operation. But more and more people are realizing, like Santosh said, once you drive an EV, then you just love the ease of drive in a city, the silence, the power delivery, and the slight uh, point like cruise control, you know, that auto holds in city traffic, all that starts getting to them and they can't go back to a night. So it's not, the people come in for cost of operation, but stay back for the premium drive experience that they get. Yeah. You use the word premium yeah. and in many ways that kind of gets associated with EVs also in a good way, not not just the, oh my God, it's out of my reach way. Uh, you chose very consciously to now have that new retail channel. Yeah. Um, one reason is the obvious one that, you know, your portfolio was getting so wide that you needed to separate it. but. But what's, what's the other hook for the customer? Because like you said, if some of them are pre-decided, some of them aren't pre-decided. So, you know, for them to find the EV specific showroom, um, is that a gamble? I wouldn't say it's a gamble. Firstly, um, you know, the same customer when he looks for an eyes, he expects a different customer experience. Mm -hmm. But EVs, they want a customer experience which is more like a tech, uh, buying a tech product. They want uh, experience which, you know, kind of, has a deep dive at the time of buying into the car. But the biggest difference I see that, I mean, we joke around, you know, when in a nice customer's uh, mind, after he buys the car, the lesser he speaks to the company, the happier he is. Yeah. But in EV, it's the other way around. He wants continuous to be in touch with the dealer, I mean, or the, the company. You know, he wants to give feedback. He wants to know what's happening, what are the updates that are going to come. And the level of responsiveness they expect is immense, you know. I mean, it's unfair, but it's also challenging. They expect us to react the way tech companies do. They expect us to give service and software. They don't think it's unfair, by the way. They don't think it's unfair. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think it's very fair. Yeah. Uh, their expectation, it's going to push us to really get there faster. The retail experience is a reaction to customer expectation. We wanted to give a level of retail. And that's good perspective, actually, yeah. Um, if you've been to our store, you'll see that the, you know, the community as the core of the... You know, I've been to both your stores. Uh, uh, the first store that is. Yeah, we are building it around community, and I'm sure you'll see that the community sticks together. The EV community sticks together. They like to help each other out. They like to comment on each other, and also they take it. That's a nice point, to yeah. convert more people. So <laughs> yeah. that's how it is. Yeah, yeah that's a good point yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, is that true? You think for you? Because I know again the misnomer is that all your buyers are chauffeur driven. It's not always the case. No way, no way. Uh, you know, even if our software driven customers, they all drive cars on weekends. So definitely uh, they would like to uh, have fun of driving. That's why they love the EVs as well. So, uh, but yes, uh, I think in general, luxury customers are demanding. And uh, EV <laughs> just adds to it. Adds to it uh, in a sense where it's about expectation management. It's about trying to uh, see they want the software updates, uh, you know, much more frequent updates to them. But I think uh, they, they are a bit more matured lot as well. They also understand the challenges with it. Uh, and and uh, it's a bit of science, right, in terms of charging, uh, understanding where, what capacity, where you need, what you do. So uh, it's a bit of technical consultation, which is not happening in a combustion engine car compared to a, uh, EV. But uh, I, I, I still feel that most of these customers once, uh, you know, right now it's an additional car at their home. Uh, to make it the primary car, it's still a leap of faith. 
uh, once the charging times come you know uh, at a certain level uh, range is our biggest strength you know we offer cars with 600 km yeah. range for 50 km range so that we take out that anxiety part but still they want fast charging they also that uncertainty that if i go to a public charging will i get the slot yeah. or where, whether i have to wait so it's a matter of time uh, but uh, you know each year with newer and newer products to be very fair if you compare the number of options in eyes uh, evs are hardly 2% in terms of product offering as well so the day the more product offerings comes we feel the transition would happen much faster you know and the other good part is that we've seen that evolution happen so much quicker we also don't maybe at the consumer doesn't accept a slow cycle there like you know in the in eyes i think they're quite happy to see upgrades coming every 5 years with ev the expectation i mean between even your eqc and your eqe there's so much difference in product what you are doing today compared to your very first ev so much difference so uh, technology playing that enabling role i mean a lot of what you mentioned comes down to what happens with the market what happens with infrastructure so i while i accept that um, do you think that the, the speed at which technology continues to make this change faster is what will eventually do it but you know it has two sides to it one is more and more newer cars coming to the market and evs but what happens to the residual value of the old ev in the market and this is where a lot of customers now feel uh, if i buy now what happens i should wait in 5 yeah. years uh, because whether i get a residual value like a combustion engine we as an oem are now giving residual value guarantee as good as a combustion engine so no things are uh, no two ways for the customer the other argument we tell a customer today is if you look at the taxation in india you know the combustion engine has 14% minimum tax at 20% road tax 15 to 20% yes. so technically 60 to 65% of the car is taxed in a combustion engine whereas in a ev it's hardly 5% so if you buy a, a, a car worth 100 bucks uh, you know in a combustion engine i say you hardly get 35 bucks of content whereas in a ev you get 95 bucks worth of content actually there is material cost in the car which is significantly high compared to a uh combustion engine and this is and then i tell consumers that you have to calculate the residual value backwards if this value is at the end of 15 years and now you depreciate this because the ev battery can be recycled 97 of the battery 97% of the battery can be reused for another ev yeah. which is not possible in a combustion engine but it needs lot of education then they come up with uh, sustainable materials uh, you know these uh, materials are they mined well and then we have to again tell them about sustainable materials usage of these things so it's a lot of educative sales process is just not a simple transaction i would say well i know it sounds cliche but one of the reasons i picked this spot was for that whole sustainable angle however i think the goa vibe is sort of overtaking <laughs> that right now for you know when in goa yeah, yeah. Uh, i want to quickly get that point from you as yeah. well this 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 thing about residual value yeah. early nexon ev customers how how are they seeing that today see uh, one of the big what's your feedback from that residual value is a concern uh, i'll go as much to say that people who bought the car early had absolutely no expectation of there's a real leap of faith a leap of faith yeah. and they thought i mean we said to we give 8 years warranty yeah. and they thought that's the life of the car <laughs> you know i mean yeah. sometimes things are so good to, to be true that they think that's the you know end of life so that's a big um, learning we are trying to push saying that 8 years is the warranty you you are when the battery outlasts the car many many times yeah. and when we have data where even after 100000 kilometers the battery is still at 92% soc you know so it's that's, much yeah. much more advanced than any mobile phone that we have so this edu- this is the primary bit of education that's need to happen in terms of tech you know the customer expects two things basically they want more and more range but we believe that range is equal to money there will be a threshold it could be 400 kilometers or it could be 500 kilometers but very soon what's coming up is speed of charging yeah. you know and people want to top up and go in 15 20 minutes so that's the other tech thing but coming back to residual value i think um, we are going to you know it's a di- uh, both uh, a challenge both at the demand side of the used car and ability of people to sell at a good price we have to work work that around i think trust in the technology is what is going to drive both yeah, the demand as well as the sale yeah. because they should feel that this technology is going to last 15 yeah. years 20 years then things will come in i think uh, yeah. you're talking about technology and charging all new charging stations are with 800 volt yeah. so i think that's a very good step that they are so, already planning for the future because cars like us and i think most of the cars will be having a need that that's why so yeah. i think india is also gearing up uh, and if you talk to a lot of these uh, solution providers they are all installing new charges are all 800 volt uh, so i think that these are signals that it will happen time 
I think to predict is a challenge always. Yeah. Uh, as I, mean, I think it's better we to keep on consuming. Yeah, and like, we did that with ice also, right? Like yeah, we used to keep making punts, but it didn't mean anything yeah. always. But like many things in India, I think we'll see the hockey stick grow. Yeah, yeah. India is no. That's India. That. Yeah, that's India. It takes sputters around and suddenly. Yeah. So I keep uh, the analogy of the ketchup coming out of the sauce uh, bottle. You, know? <laughs> you keep shaking it. One day it all comes out. But, uh, but uh, I also say it's a marathon and not a sprint because yeah. uh, it will take time. Yeah. The good part is, uh, I think uh, both of us, in fact, I can say also for you, uh, we can fund this business via commercial business as well. Well, absolutely. So in that sense, we have the technologies on both sides. Yeah. We have electrified combustion engines, we have a pure electric. Yeah. So, uh, and then as a consumer takes this transitionary step, I think our responsibility is to offer newer technologies, newer products, and wait for the market to mature and not do crazy things as well. Yeah. Now, I know in Goa, you shouldn't just come and chat, so I'll not keep you away from other Goa things. One last thing, which maybe you can just be a one or two word answer also, it's up to you. Um, you've already mentioned speed of charging is one you know, specific area where consumers are damn interested in seeing what happens next. Besides that, what else would you either like to see happen or what is it that you think will happen? I think the availability itself of uh, and reliable network which is aggregated in singular apps. Uh, you know, today there are multiple apps uh, to be used based on geography and also the, the concern is once you raise the location, you are not sure. So pre-booking a, a charging slot. For example, appointment working. based, yeah. <laughs> so these things, but it's a matter of time. Yeah. I think most of our cars will come with yeah. a lot of more features and, and you know, you can directly pay from the car. So the convenience aspect, I think, also needs to be done. And that's also all stakeholders. It's uh, OEMs, uh, the, 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 the suppliers of charging network and government as well in terms of English. What about you? For me, it is democratizing range. You know, I think we think 400 kilometers is a kind of threshold. If it's available at a reasonable price, probably below 20 lakhs, that will set fire to yeah. the market. Because then people will say, okay, I'm not going to drive 400 kilometers at a stretch. I anyway need a break. So I drive 300, I still have 100 left of real world range. I yeah. charge it and then I'm good for another 300, 400. So democratization of range and added to it the faster charging options, hopefully supported by the government, the private operators, everybody together, working together on the field and on the app, that'll kind of, uh, you know, create the disruption. Yeah. You're both doing a lot of work in this space. I think the consumer recognizes that. They've rewarded you for it also. I'm sure you would yeah. like more reward. <laughs> but, sure. uh, but you know, uh, I have to say that it's, it's, been, it's been great getting some of this perspective across from both of you because eventually you're right that people care about what they care about, right? I mean, you can keep having these great headlines and things like that. Hopefully we've been able to solve some of this or at least explain or clear some of the doubts or confusion you have. Any questions you have, please leave us a comment. And uh, this is ongoing. I'm going to keep coming back yes. to you. And I know you will keep coming back to us yes. with more products and more excitement. It's great to see you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.